Some officers in the anti-skill department enter a facility, and the female among them asks what kind of place they have come to for thieves to break in. The officer says that the company is involved in atmospheric continuum mechanics, and when she asks someone else, he explains that the research facility is for a company that compresses air and sells it. They keep searching the facility for the thieves, but find a man wounded in one of the laboratories. The female officer asks the man what happened in the facility, but before he can respond there is an explosion, and they move back. When the effect dies down, they realize that the explosion created an underground hole. The officer says that the thieves must have escaped through that hole. Accelerator hears the news of the theft in one of the laboratories in School District 4 in the hospital. He presses a button on the instrument around his neck and floats to the ground, surprising the other people in the hospital. Misaka runs to him and tells him not to run away because it's the day when the bandage around his head will be removed. Accelerator says that doesn't make it a public holiday, but Misaka keeps shouting that it's a holiday. Accelerator's bandage is removed and the doctor says he has to conduct a simple examination, although Accelerator won't need bandages anymore. Accelerator says he doesn't need a test, but the doctor says that the bullet he took to his head affected his speech, numerical, and motor skills. Accelerator is forced to sit down, and the doctor asks for his name and background. He says his name is Accelerator, and he was once first ranked among seven level five espers in Academy City. He can control all vectors, like momentum, heat, and electricity. He also explains how he got his injury, and how he now has to rely on the instrument around his neck to walk and talk. The doctor listens intently and comments that Accelerator has no problem. Masaka, also known as Last Order, sees other Masakas and asks them if the party she has prepared for Accelerator is ready. Last Order is nervous because this is the first time she has prepared a party for someone and she wants to make sure that it is perfect. Accelerator steps out of the room. The anti-skill officers who entered the facility earlier enter the hospital, and the female officer who seems to be their leader asks to see whoever is in charge of the hospital. A lady comes to meet her secretly and the officer asks about her chest wound before telling her about the theft earlier that morning. She explains that the thieves stole a weapon that was created with the intent to destroy Accelerator. The female officer, Yomikawa, suspects that the thieves will come to the hospital and just then, the thieves get out of a bus outside the hospital and cause an explosion of all the cars parked outside. The thieves enter the hospital and ask for Accelerator, but Yomikawa says they won't provide him to them. A fight ensues, and it's hard for the officers to keep up because of the kind of weapons that the leader of the thieves is holding. They try to fall back and regroup, but the thieves catch up to them, and one of the officers advises Yomikawa to attack the thief, carrying a bag full of magazines instead. This also proves difficult because Yomikawa finds out that the thieves are high schoolers. Takata Yoko, Kadera Minori, and Nakahara Hiromi. Last Order takes hold of the cupcakes and asks after Accelerator because she's worried about him. Accelerator shows up in the fight scene and tells them to get away because they are disturbing. Last Order comes to the scene and is almost wounded, but Accelerator saves her, causing his wound to open up and spill blood on the bag of cakes in Last Order's hand. Yoko takes the back and tells Kadera to take a magazine from Hiro, who is wounded, and the two of them escape together. The lady who was speaking with Yomikawa earlier offers to drive Accelerator if he wants to go after the thieves. Accelerator tells her to go underground since the thieves will think about avoiding cameras first. Kadera asks Yoko if Hiro has been caught and if they can save him, but Yoko says they have to make a clean getaway with the genetic information of Accelerator that they have. Accelerator shows up in their midst, and Yoko tries to catch him with the trap that she has made, but is unable to. Accelerator deceives them, after revealing to them all the tactics they are using, and the form of the weapon that was created because of him, too. He defeats Yoko, and almost kills her, but Kidera stops him. He leaves with the bag, and brings it to last order. She presents the bag to him, and tells him to look forward to the first of many parties celebrating his recovery. A lady jumps down into the river, and opens her eyes in the hospital. Her name is Hitokawa Hasami, a 16-year-old, in whose pocket a suicide note was found. The girl is sad that she's a failure at everything, including dying because she couldn't even successfully commit suicide. The practitioners with her decide to kill her with water from the river, where she tried to drown earlier and report it as death due to drowning. They say that they will use her body for the cause of justice and each of them chant by DA's dogma. Some officers who seem to be a part of anti-skill chase a lady who is described as an esper skilled in controlling corpses. The HQ asks the officers who are carrying out the operation to be careful, because the girl can cause harm. The HQ also asks those who are going after her to the hospital to be careful, and make sure that no harm comes to the patients. Accelerator hears a sound in the hospital and turns off his device, because he doesn't want to be distracted. The girl defeats the officers closest to her, 
but they give away her location as she runs into Accelerator's room. She asks Accelerator if he knows the whereabouts of Last Order, who is the lady in the picture that she shows him, but Accelerator doesn't respond, and the officers enter the room. The girl tries to run away, but the officers capture her, and Accelerator does not meddle in anything going on. One of the officers thank him for his cooperation, but he doesn't respond. Once the officer walks out, Accelerator activates his device again and sees the picture that was in the girl's hand on the floor. The officers report to HQ that the girl, Esther, has been apprehended, and the HQ says that he is glad that they didn't have to use the coffin because it can't be controlled well enough yet. Some of the officers enter the part of the bus where Esther is kept and say that they won't kill her because they were asked to bring her alive, but they'll administer some punishment to her since she's of no use to the cause of justice. The bus driver is about to take off, but the moment he turns on the ignition and lights, he sees Accelerator in front of them. Accelerator asks if Esther is on the bus and asks for her to be released because he wants to ask her a few questions. The officer who was speaking to Accelerator in the room earlier identifies him points a gun at him and asks him to return to his bed because he has no business with what is going on since they are from Anti-Skill. Accelerator refutes the guy's claim by saying that Anti-Skill doesn't point guns to civilians. The officer says that the Anti-Skill officers are fakes and that they, Academy City's DA, are the real officers of justice. The driver tells the officer arguing with Accelerator to let it go because HQ commanded them to stay away from patients, but the officer says that Acceleration is a vermin, not a patient. He says he exterminates vermin by the order of DA dogma. The officer attacks Accelerator, but he blocks it, and the officer realizes that Accelerator is an esper. He also overthrows the bus that tries to run him over, and the officer is forced to bring out the robot. Esther is surprised to see that HQ successfully affixes a soul into the robot. She also sees Accelerator and recognizes him as the boy she asked a question earlier. Accelerator destroys the robot and is surprised when a dead body falls out of it. The officer escapes while he's doing this. Esther also confirms that the people are using necromancy. The real anti-skill officers show up, and Accelerator reports everything that happened to them. He tells Yomikawa that the girl doesn't look like she just died but has been dead two days before. One of the officers tells Yomikawa that the girl is a high schooler who committed suicide two days before and was reported dead by the rescue team. They realize that the girl was a level 2 esper, but the damage created by the robot seemed to be at least level 4, and they are surprised that DA did not just transfer the ability from the girl's brain, but increased it too. Yomikawa asks Accelerator what it means, but he asks them to find out and walks away. The officer reports to HQ that the robot was defeated and the girl also escaped. His HQ says he doesn't have use of the officer since he failed, and he decides to leave the job to Doxun. Doxun says Chung Ki will be enough. Last Order meets Accelerator on the way and asks what he's doing outside by that time of the night. She also asks if he's not trying to leave and he promises that he's not leaving before sending her back to bed. Accelerator meets Esther in his room and she introduces herself as Esther Rosenthal. Esther asks Accelerator to help her because she was the one who taught those people how to control dead bodies and now the whole world may be in danger. Accelerator disagrees at first but after listening to her, he agrees and tells her to show him the way to where they are. While leading Accelerator to the place where she was held hostage, Esther remembers how she she was chained up, and Doxun once threw a red skull at her. They arrive at the place, and Accelerator goes in by breaking the wall. Once inside, they see a robot, and Esther calls it Koinchi. Doxun says he's surprised that Esther came to look for him by herself, and she calls him Hishigeta Mikihiko. Accelerator doesn't understand what is going on, but Esther recalls when Hishigeta initially finished constructing Koinchi and showed it to her. Esther told him to stop then, but he said he could only do what he did thanks to the numbers that Esther's family wrote. He also said that Esther used dead bodies on a whim, and Esther tried to be remorseful, but Hishigata said she loved doing what she did. Esther tells Hishigata that he needs to stop. Accelerator gets into the middle of the exchange, and Hishigata recognizes him as Last Order's guardian. Hishigata tells Accelerator that he has no reason to fight him there, and then, but he also tells Accelerator that he knows a lot about him. He proves it by telling Accelerator some of the skills that he possesses. This arouses Accelerator and he attacks Quinky, but no matter what he does, it doesn't affect Hishigata and Quinky. Hishigata says that he'll humbly leave, and he leaves through the roof of the building. Esther says that Hishigata is right because she used dead bodies to do her bidding. Accelerator asks if that matters, since she wants to stop him. Last Order enters the ward with a nylon and tells Accelerator that she ordered three packs of food like he requested, but she's cut short by the presence of Esther. She asks Esther who she is and stops Accelerator from answering for her. Esther introduces herself, but Accelerator stops her from telling Last Order that she's a necromancer. Last Order is so annoyed by the exchange between Accelerator and Esther 
that she throws all three packs of food at Accelerator, accusing him of infidelity. Accelerator asks her to stop since they are all hungry. Esther is amazed by Last Order, who she recalls as a human guinea pig who has experienced death over 1,000 times. They leave the room and head for the restaurant. The doctor is doing a checkup for someone and he brings out a DA card. In the restaurant, Esther is amazed by all that she sees because she has never seen all those kinds of food before. She asks about each one on the menu, and both Accelerator and Last Order describe it in different ways. Accelerator as the name of the real food and Last Order as the way she perceives the food. Esther is willing to try them all. Last Order feeds Esther and she cries at how marvelous it tastes. Esther feeds Last Order too because Last Order said that that's what families do. Accelerator excuses himself from the table and thinks about DA as he walks away, saying that he needs someone who knows people who are up to no good. He calls Yoshikawa, the lady in the hospital with a chest wound, and asks her if she knows DA, but she says she doesn't even after Accelerator describes every little detail of the things he has heard them say. Yoshikawa says she'll look into it, and Accelerator returns to the table, but Esther and Last Order are gone because Esther vomited. Last Order leaves a letter asking Accelerator to take care of the bills. When Accelerator returns to his room, he meets Esther undressed and Last Order throws a cloth at his face to cover them. Esther says she's not bothered, but Last Order says that she's supposed to be bothered, and Esther says she'll be careful next time. The doctor comes in and tells Last Order that it's time for her regular checkup. Last Order leaves the room, while the doctor tells Accelerator that Yomikawa asked him to check the dead high schooler, but there was nothing he could do since she was already dead. The doctor, however, shows Accelerator what he found in the mouth of the girl. Once the doctor leaves, Esther says that the card is a low-level charm and she goes to the morgue with Accelerator. Esther explains to Accelerator that she taught those people what she shouldn't have taught them, because Hasami is a person. She decides to affix a fake soul, Hutu, which she has into Hasami's body. Accelerator comes in contact with Hasami's residual thoughts and catches a glimpse into her previous story and how she was killed. Esther successfully affixes Hutu into Hasami, but some officers throw them out of the morgue. However, Accelerator takes something from them, and they attack him. Hasami stands up. The officer is surprised when Hasami stands up and activates Hutu. He says that she's supposed to be dead due to their justice, and he starts shooting at her but she dodges. When the officer aims the gun directly at her head, Accelerator Accelerator gets in front of her and tells the officer that he'll show him who a monster is. Accelerator tells the officer that since they enjoy killing people and dissolving them, then they are monsters. And since he is a monster too, they can get into a fight together. Accelerator seizes the man and says he hopes to use bioelectricity to create art, but the man won't get to see it because he'll be dead. The man faints in Accelerator's hands, and Accelerator thinks it's a disgrace to villainy. He turns to the second man and says it's his turn, but Accelerator doesn't see as well as before before, and he soon realizes that his head is bleeding again. The officer takes the chance to wreak havoc and run away. Hasami saves them from being affected by the walls that the man breaks before running out. Esther is worried about Accelerator, but Hasami says that he'll get better with the appropriate treatment, because he hasn't sustained any life-threatening injuries. The officer running away almost hit a little girl in a wheelchair, but one of the Masakas saves the girl by resisting the man. The man wraps her with his weapon, and Hasami shows up, carrying Esther. A vehicle stops, telling the man to hurry and get in. The man runs in and decides to take the mistake with him as his hostage. Esther tells Hasami that they shouldn't pursue them now, but at a later time when they are better prepared. Anti-Skill comes to the place, identifies the car prints, and decides that the ones who struck again were DA. The doctor is with Accelerator again, and he wonders why he won't stay still. Some high schoolers on the road meet, and one tells the other about a rumor she heard recently. She says that there is a train that's constantly moving and never stops, but the other girl doesn't believe her. Hishigata calls a number and calls the person who picks it Mr. Breeder. Mr. Breeder asks Hishigata to call him Nakimoto, promising that he'll not call him Dachshund, but Hishigata. Hishigata asks if the train is currently under school district 7, and tells Nakimoto that DA is starting to go overboard with the things they are doing. Nakimoto agrees to do something about them, and the call ends. Nakimoto tells his secretary that he previously thought the DA organization would be of use to him, but now that they are being difficult to control, he'll eliminate them. A lady receives a call and she asks the caller if they are sure about what they are requesting. When they confirm, she cuts the call and presses three buttons. Three people come out of a place, and she tells them to get ready, because it's time to work. Accelerator wakes up, and Last Order, who was asleep, also wakes up, sad that she slept at the most important period after staying awake for a long time. Accelerator asks her to get him coffee, 
and although the doctor warned against it, Last Order decides to get it for Accelerator because she believes it is medicinal in his case. Misaka reports to Accelerator with a letter informing him that Esther has gone after those who attacked him because a civilian has been abducted. She tells him that the civilian who was kidnapped is number 146. Yoshikawa calls Accelerator and tells him that she has done her research, and DA is short of disciplinary action of the punitive measure variety, but is just a secret society. She says that the DA has a lot of sympathizers supporting them at the moment, including a dangerous neuroscientist. She adds that there may be a lot of danger looming around the DA, because some of their supporters are beginning to turn against them. She tells Accelerator to be careful if he wants to get involved in something like this. The DA had a meeting and concluded that they needed to show Nakimoto that they were much stronger now that he wanted to turn against them. Hishigata listens to all they have to say but doesn't comment until he sees the Misaka that was taken hostage on the screen. He asks that they hand over the hostage to him for the sake of justice. Yomakawa finds out more about DA and is shocked to see that the organization is filled with dark people from the anti-skill team. They bring news about an explosion in the third district and the officers move out in a hurry. The four kids who caused the explosion and checking to see if they killed everyone as they were commanded to wipe out the entire DA. The anti-skill blows up the entrance to the Sukunabikona Foods Supplement Factory, and the officers from Assault Team 1 troop into the building as they enter a shooting battle with some DA officers. Yomikawa is also part of them. The DA officers wonder how the anti-skill officers could find out about that factory. Someone reports the situation to the anti-skill headquarters. Hasami and Esther are running, and Esther thinks about the girl that was kidnapped, determined to keep her promise to save the girl. Last Order returns to Accelerator with the coffee he requested, and narrates how she also rewarded herself with a can of pomegranates. Accelerator tries to charge his battery by himself, but Last Order helps him when it falls out of his hand. DA officers withdraw to regroup because they have run out of ammo, and this gives the anti-skill officers the chance to go further into the factory. Ito asks Yomikawa how it is possible that the DA and anti-skill come from the same root, and Yomikawa explains that, although they may be from the same root, the root of the DA is rotten because they were members pushed for taking their fight for justice too far. The DA HQ has a meeting about the ongoing exchange, and they don't think they stand a chance against the anti-skill troops due to their unlimited supply of reinforcements. The leader asks Hishigata if they can use the weapon with him, but Hishigata says that the weapon is pretty useless since Esther got away, and he couldn't lay his hands on Last Order either. He says that he may be able to use the weapon if he lays his hand on one of the sisters, and the leader asks who the sisters are. Hishigata tells him to give him the hostage with them, and when the leader agrees, he cuts the call and says he wants to do away with the justice-obsessed fools. He asks Hirumi if the hostage will be enough to get the weapon started. A lady with green Green hair stares back at Hishigata. One of the DA officers in the supplement factory receives a call to transport the hostage to Chemistry Building 6 of Saiyan High School, and he tells the rest of the troops that they are using Tarantula after he gets off the call. One of the four kids says that there is a bag with a girl in it in DA's ace, and he asks, where next they are going. The leader says that they are going to Sukunabikona Food Supplement Factory. The anti-skill notice the decline in the attack of the DA officers and the troops decide to go further into the factory, but they are stopped when they see something unusual. One of the officers asks if it is heavy factory equipment, but when the equipment starts shooting at them, they realize that it is a dangerous weapon, a Gatling gun, and begin to run back. Anti-skill headquarters are surprised to see that the DA possessed a weapon like that. Yomikawa notices some officers running away while carrying a bag, and she runs in their direction, only to see that Ito had noticed them earlier and is trying to stop them. With Ito's help, Yomikawa climbs up and directly attacks the DA officers running away with the hostage. She stops two of them and wastes the bullet in the gun of the last officer until he drops the hostage and Yomikawa sees that the officer was carrying a person in the bag the two of them point guns at each other. The four kids kill the DA reinforcements, and the Gatling gun also stops shooting because of overheating, and the officer in the tarantula decides to use some rolling blades instead. The four kids stop the movement of the tarantula, and the driver recognizes them as Nakimoto's cleaners, Darksiders. The driver tries to carry on his job and buy time, but the girls stop him and cause the tarantula to break walls, which endangers the life of Yomikawa and the girl in the bag. Yomikawa goes after the girl in the bag and almost saves her, but when she's hit by an officer, the girl falls from Yomikawa's grip. 
However, Esther arrives just in time to save her, and when Esther almost falls, Asami runs to save her too. The four girls try to take the girl in the bag, saying that they will let Esther and Hasami go free. Yomikawa offers to fight the girls in place of Esther and Hasami. One of the girls changes her form, offering to kill them after seeing that Yomikawa is from the anti-skill group. Last Order tells Accelerator that his charge is complete, and she asks him to call her if he needs anything else before she steps out of the room. Accelerator steps out, and Last Order asks where he is going. He tells her he's going to the convenience store, and Last Order tells him to get her a pomegranate. Accelerator deactivates his device once he steps out and flies in excitement. The lady who sent the four girls receives a progress report from the girls, and tells them they may get a bonus if they bring the girl in the bag. Yomikawa asks the girls why they hate teachers, and Naru, the one who changed her form earlier, says that teachers are the root of all evil in Academy City, because they have failed to protect everyone. Hence they aim to kill all teachers until they get to the headmaster or head teacher, and they will finish him off. Yomikawa tries to convince them that people like her are good teachers who are trying to protect Academy City from real evil people. Naru and the girls are considering if this is true when a DA survivor shows up and attacks Naru. Naru is pissed off as she blocks off the bullets from the man's gun and concludes that there are no good teachers after all. She calls Yaku, one of the other girls, to finish off the man. Yaku jumps down and throws her specially formulated refrigerant, which is at 269 degrees. The officer freezes and Naru kicks him off. Naru immediately turns back to Yomikawa and apologizes for keeping her waiting. Yomikawa asks Esther to run away with the hostage, and says that she's counting on Esther. Esther tells Hasami to make sure that nothing happens to Yomikawa, causing Hasami to interfere with the fight and annoy Naru. The other girls analyze Hasami and conclude that she's probably an esper, who is an honor student and has come to protect the teacher. The girls ask Naru to kill the student first, then the teacher, to increase the despair of the teacher. Hasami analyzes Naru's powers, and tells Esther that a battle between herself and Naru will last about 10 minutes. Hasami fights against Naru, but Naru's mascot suit can shapeshift from defense to offense, and Hasami didn't see this coming. Naru's psychokinetically imbued paper also has the hardness of tungsten alloy, combined with the flexibility of the fabric. Paired with her twisted modeling style and fighting sense, her practical combat is second to none. Hasami can dodge most of the weapons but is still torn on her thigh. Esther wonders what she can do to save Hasami and stop her from dying. Naru decides to finish off Hasami, but is stopped by something that is soon attributed to Esther's psychokinetic skills. Hasami now has an armor of the dead, but Naru says she wouldn't let it stop her from wielding her mascot suit's attack. Naru decides to use Killer Punch, but is affected by the same effect from Hasami again. Esther tells the girls to leave because she has reached her limit of patience, but Yaku advises Naru to take them down, since they are using dirt. Naru takes Yaku's advice and creates an excavator version. She tries to take down Hasami with this weapon, but Hasami runs away. However, she gets Hasami when she tries to protect Esther, and Esther begs Naru to stop, but Naru says she's doing it all for the sake of justice. Esther cries, asking why the world is full of nothing but despair. Naru says it's the teacher's fault, and she'll make sure to kill them all for that reason. She takes her weapon to the next level, ready to crush them all, but Accelerator shows up and destroys the excavator, surprising the four girls and leaving them in wonder about who he is. Esther thanks Accelerator for saving them, and Accelerator tells her to leave the place with them all. The leader of the four girls asks Accelerator to join them, because she likes the look in his eyes and his face. She says that if he joins them, they can go on a teacher hunting party together as the five of them. But no matter what she says and offers, Accelerator doesn't respond to her. She angrily shouts at Accelerator to say something. Accelerator says the word, something, and attacks the leader, causing her to slip. He moves closer to her and carries Tarantula above her head, only to release it and Naru and the others run to protect their leader. Naru asks if they should retreat at a time like this, but the leader says they'll get punished for that and says they should attack Accelerator with a combo instead. She says that they are the unbeatable scavengers and that they should use their scavenger combo. They lock Accelerator inside a figure, Iron Maiden, and initiate liquid thermite at about 4,000 degrees, expecting Accelerator to burn completely without bone fragments. Accelerator comes out of Iron Maiden to their surprise and takes down the Darksiders. The scientist that sent the Darksiders is disappointed that they met with Accelerator and will lose their pay, as well as be reprimanded. Accelerator wonders why what he thought would be rehab for him has finished so soon. Hishigata wonders if he made the part configuration too complex, but remembers that once the memories of 10,031 deaths arrive, he can complete the formula. He tells Hirumi that it's just a little before their research is complete. Esther looks around and is saddened by the state of the factory because she doesn't think anything good can come from fighting that way. Asami brings the hostage to her 
her, and she confirms that the hostage is alright because her vitals are still good. Accelerator returns his battery and asks Esther if she can heal Yomikawa, but Esther says she can only apply first aid. Hirumi smiles. Esther checks on Naru and the other girls. Darksiders, and while doing so, she tells Accelerator that she can tell that he didn't plan to kill those girls, although he caused some damage. Accelerator tells her to stop coming to her conclusions, yet she says he's the only one, and goes ahead to ask him to become her master. She presents a red object to him, and gives it a form like it's the custom of the Rosenthal family, representing that she's offering her flesh and blood. Accelerator asks her to ask Yomikawa instead, and the red ball in her hand flies away. She chases it, while Accelerator walks away. Hirumi activates the booting of a certain robot after seeing the hostage girl lying on the floor through a screen. Esther tells Hasami, now known as Huotu, to beg Accelerator to be Esther's master. They chase after Accelerator begging and pleading with him to accept Esther as his student. Accelerator stops halfway and asks Huotu why she's undressed, and Esther explains that they were so engrossed in catching the culprit that they forgot to find a dress for Huato. Esther offers her dress to boost Wado's defense, but Wado stops her, and they ask for Accelerator's clothes instead, since they want him to be the master. Accelerator stops them from following him. Yomikawa and the Misaka girl stand up and they request first aid. Esther tells Accelerator that she wants him to become her master because she cannot defeat Harumi by herself, and she needs Accelerator's strength. Accelerator stops, and as if on cue, a robot that Esther identifies as Tao-Ti, Rosenthal Magical Arrays, a Sijiang charm more powerful than Hu-Tu, comes from outside and attacks them. Esther tells everyone to stay back, but Accelerator jumps forward and asks the others to stay back. Esther pleads with him to be careful, because he doesn't know the kind of abilities they possess. Accelerator dodges the attack of the robot, and the machinery multiplies itself and produces another, intriguing Accelerator, who doesn't think they will win two against one. The robot tells Accelerator Accelerator to stay back, and Accelerator is surprised to hear a female voice, which Esther recognizes as Harumi. The robot produces a third one, and this time, it seizes the Misaka girl, and Yomikawa shouts at it to release the girl. Esther tries to save the girl, but is unable to, and the robots prepare to leave the factory with the girl in their grip. They fly away, but Accelerator flies after them, saying they can't get away just like that. Esther asks Huotu if she can chase them, but considering the flames, she may not be able to succeed and Esther is forced to ask Huotu to stay back. Yomikawa asks how Hasami is still alive since she saw her dead body, but Esther explains that Huotu's soul now lives inside Hasami's body because of the ability Esther possesses as a member of the Rosenthal family. Hishigata is happy to see that Hirumi has caught one of the sisters and brought her to him. He's about to continue the research when he sees Accelerator coming towards them. Esther explains more about necromancy to Yomikawa and they conclude that the problem is Hishigata. Esther also says that the robots that came earlier are from the evil spirits of the numbers and are more dangerous than necromancy. She adds that creatures created using this method are very hard to control and even end up damaging the cities. The monsters come to rest and Hishigata communicates with Accelerator, but Accelerator tells him to come out and show his face. Accelerator attacks one of the monsters, and Hishigata says he can't wait to put Accelerator in a coffin because he is first rank and he knows marvelous things will happen. Hirumi speaks to Hishigata and they decide that they should face their objectives first. Hence, they begin the journey again, but Accelerator still follows them. Esther tells Yomikawa that she wants to stop Hishigata and Hirumi herself because she is the one who started it all. She casts a spell and leaves the factory. Huotu goes with her too, leaving Yomikawa surprised that Academy City has too many kids who want to do things on their own. Accelerator catches up with Hirumi and Hishigata, who are already copying the data of 10,031 deaths from the Masaka girl. Accelerator reveals the hidden monster and this amazes Hishigata. He tries to deceive Accelerator by saying that he killed the guinea pigs in the past, but is not playing savior. Accelerator proves him wrong and tries to catch up with them. Esther tells Huotu that she's not chasing the monsters because she'll only get in Accelerator's way, but she wants to do what she can from where she is, since everything that is happening is happening, because she came to that city. Hirumi asks her brother, Hishigata, what it would be like to be on level 6 and Hishigata thinks it'll be stronger than someone who's first ranked level 5. Hirumi is excited about her brother's research and is happy to meet Esther, a necromancer who is supposed to help in the fulfillment of their dreams. Hishigata shows Esther all the achievements they have made in the past with science, and Hirumi asks that Esther help them to fulfill their dream of creating the first level 6 Esper ever. Esther explains to Hishigata that necromancy involves imputing a pseudo-soul into a dead body to increase its abilities. She even showed him the cards she brought, but Hishigata boasts with the science innovations and methods that he has been using. She asks Hishigata how he hopes to create the level 6 Esper in all that he has said, 
but he doesn't give her a favorable answer. The next day, Esther wonders for whom they have brought her to help them, and also what she needs to do. Hirumi explains to Esther that people get arrested for undressing in public. Hirumi continues her boxing training, but Esther notices that Hirumi is not good at it, and Hirumi says that what a person can do and what a person is good at are different things. Esther enters Hishigata's lab and listens to his conversation about his research with his partner. Hishigata says he has sent Hirumi home because of her low vitals. His partner says they need a subject for the research to be complete and asks if Hishigata is willing to hire any more girls. Hishigata says a lot of things and turns to Esther asking if she's not alarmed by all the things she has heard. Esther says that she has heard more dreadful things as a necromancer. Hishigata explains to Esther that during their experiments, they noticed that locking the girls, the subjects, into the machines increased their abilities, but when the machines were too big, the mind was affected. He talks about how the mind and soul are important to him as a scientist and how it affects the success of the experiment. He says that a time will come when anyone will be able to achieve level 6 easily. Esther is alarmed that Hishigata is doing these experiments on Hirumi, while Hirumi thinks all they want to achieve is reaching level 6. Esther meets with Hirumi and says that she doesn't even know what her powers and abilities are for. Hirumi asks Esther to help her because her goal is to be useful to her brother. She makes Esther promise that she'll help her, and they visit Hishigata together. Hirumi tells her brother that she'd love to reach level 6 now that they have Esther and they don't have to wait so long anymore. But Hishigata disagrees because he has never seen necromancy at use, and he doesn't want his sister to risk her life for something that will be easily attainable soon. Hirumi runs out of the laboratory, annoyed. Hirumi commits suicide, but before she dies, she records a video, apologizing to Hishigata that she didn't show him her medical report when she first discovered that she'll die soon. She tells Esther and Hishigata to make her a level 6 immediately, because waiting years is too long and far away for her. Hishigata is devastated and he blames himself for not noticing Fester that his sister was ill, but Esther asks if there is anything she can do because she promised Hirumi that she'll help her if anything happens. Hishigata latches Hirumi into the monster he had created, Lab Equipment 6, and Hirumi comes alive, exciting him. His partner comes into the room, happy that Hishigata has decided to use Hirumi after all, but Hishigata says he's running away with his sister and doesn't wish to continue any other research. Hirumi knocks out the people in the room, and Esther finds out that one of her cards is missing. The one alive is not Hirumi, but a pseudo-soul that Esther can't control. Esther is trapped to help the monster because of a riddle about whether Hirumi is still alive or not. This is how it all started. Esther draws the sword out of the ground and is worried about what will happen to Hirumi when she uses Emperor Shun's blade. Huotu asks if Esther is crying, but Esther denies it. Esther tells Huotu that they are the only ones who have the power to stop Hishigata and Hirumi. Hishigata tells Hirumi that they have almost completely acquired the formula and their wish will be fulfilled at last. Hirumi asks Hishigata what he would like to do after they achieve their goal and he says Academy City will be forced to accept their success. But Hirumi says she's talking about things aside from research. Hishigata says he'll make sure they live normal lives, and Hirumi says she'll be happy as long as she's with her brother. Hishigata sees Accelerator again and is annoyed that Accelerator doesn't ever give up. Accelerator fights with the monsters and ends up destroying the progress of the data transfer. Annoying Hishigata. Hirumi asks her brother to calm down because she has a plan, and she leads the monsters into the middle of the city. Hishigata is impressed that rather than try to fight Accelerator, Hirumi slowed him down with her actions, but this also caused large damage within the Academy City. Accelerator looks at them, but he smiles, saying that he knows exactly where they have gone, and he kicks the last monster into the direction of their escape and tells it to announce his coming. The transfer becomes faster and is almost completed when Accelerator lands inside and Hishigata notices him. Accelerator frees Masaka from her bondage, and she opens her eyes, happy to see who has saved her. Last Order wakes up thinking that Accelerator is back, but she's disappointed to see that she only dreamt about it and announces her boredom. Hishigata and Hirumi come out to see Accelerator, and Accelerator announces that although he hated Hishigata's voice from the start, he hates his face even more. Hirumi also says she doesn't like Accelerator. Hishigata tells Accelerator all about the monsters he used before and how they were on level 3, then boosted to level 5 but were still no match for Accelerator. Accelerator tells Hishigata that joining junk to junk only produces more junk. Hishigata says he agrees, but with the new formula, he'll create something better and even Hirumi will become a level 6 esper. Hishigata and Hirumi leave Accelerator and Misaka with the monsters. Misaka offers to fight the monster with Accelerator, but Accelerator says she should go back. However, the moment Accelerator flies towards Taotie, he gets transported to another area and cannot hide his surprise. Hishigata explains to Misaka that Taotie and Koinchi now share powers and work together 
due to the Si Chiang talisman he stole from Esther and the new formula he installed. Hishigata is happy because he believes Accelerator will die due to this. Hishigata begins the installation to finally make Hirumi level 6, and he tells her that they should go to the gym together once she's a level 6 Esper. Hirumi hesitates before agreeing. Misaka watches as Accelerator fights and struggles with Koinchi and Tauti, but is sad that there is nothing she can do but watch. Accelerator tries, but the monsters keep getting him as he studies the extent of their new power. Esther and Hutu meet Misaka where she is watching the battle, and Esther asks Misaka for the whereabouts of Hishigata. There is another 20% left until the completion of Hirumi's installation, when Hishigata notices Esther and Hutu, and he commands Hundun to attack them. Esther warns Hishigata that Hirumi is dead, and Tao Wu, one of the evil spirits of the numbers, is the one controlling her body, but Hishigata refuses to listen. Accelerator creates a dune of fire with friction, and completely destroys Tauti's camera, to the wonder of Misaka who hasn't stopped watching the fight. Accelerator then faces the other monster because they are weakened now that the camera is destroyed. Accelerator makes the monster bring down some construction rods, and goes ahead to use the rods to destroy the monster. Kishigata commends Accelerator's efforts and says that he didn't expect less from him because Accelerator defeated Chunky and Tauti like they were a piece of cake. He says that, however, he used both monsters to buy enough time for the complete installation for Harumi, and adds that Accelerator is already late. Accelerator flies back in the direction where Hishigata and Harumi are. Esther hides with Shun's blade in her hand, wanting to separate Tawu from Harumi's body, but Hishigata gets in her way and she stabs him instead. Simultaneously, the installation is complete. Hishigata is happy that Hirumi doesn't look different, but is as pretty as before even after the installation is complete. Hishigata falls to the ground, and Esther stares at the scene before her eyes with the blade dripping blood in her hands. Hirumi opens her eyes and calls out to Esther. She shows her displeasure about being naked and finds something to cover herself while she asks Esther if she has gone into cosplay because she doesn't understand the blade in Esther's hand. Hirumi reaches for her brother, and Esther is still trying to convince herself that Hirumi is dead and Tao Wu is the one in her body. Hirumi is sad to see that Esther stabbed her brother, and she returns to the connection, but Hishigata in his pain is happy that his sister is finally level 6. A red light shines through Hirumi to the sky, and Accelerator sees it outside, wondering what it means. The anti-skill officers catch the DA and ask them to give up because they are surrounded on every side. One of the DA officers suggests that they give up, but another says that their justice cannot end so the anti-skill keep pursuing them into the building until something strange expands and blocks their path. Ito says, Hishigata's lab is not far away and this strange growth is probably a new weapon. Yomikawa says that they are trapped. Kuotu carries Esther and Hishigata out of the lab while Hirumi keeps spreading. Accelerator, on the other hand, saves Misaka from being swallowed up by the growth that is going on outside the laboratory which is causing a lot of damage. Esther, Hishigata, and Huotu are safely in an elevator, and Hishigata thanks Esther for her help because he believes they would never have been able to achieve anything without him. Esther tells Hishigata that Hirumi is Tawu, not his sister because no matter the number of times she tried necromancy, she has never been able to bring the dead back to life. Hishigata says they should ask Hirumi, and she shows up behind them in the elevator. Hirumi asks why Esther is acting strange, trying to prove that she is Hirumi, but after analyzing how much longer Hishigata will live, Hirumi erases the residual data of Hirumi and reveals herself to be Taowu, shocking Hishigata. Taowu congratulates Esther, saying that she is about to perfect what the Rosenthal bloodline has done for over 23 generations. Esther asks what happened to Taowu that made her defy Esther's orders, and Taowu explains that when she was first created, she communicated with a devil that asked her to fulfill the Rosenthal family wish, which exceeds the order of Esther. Hishigata is shocked by everything that is going on, and he asks Hirumi to stop playing tricks on them. Tawu asks Esther if she still remembers the wish of the Rosenthal family, and Esther says that the Rosenthal family wished to create a perfect golem. Esther recalls the wish of the Rosenthal family, and how the first person who created a golem with a dead body was exiled from the people, and called a heretic. However, the people didn't stop the research from generation to generation until now that Tawu has been able to create a perfect body and perfect soul. Tawu says that they should sing songs and rejoice because a wish of 400 years is finally coming to pass, but Esther is not convinced because she believes that Tawu should not tamper with death. 
Esther tells Tawu that it is wrong to try to tamper with death because once she lost a friend to death, and when she tried to rectify that, she lost the friend again. Tawu asks if she means that she should stop carrying out the Order of the Devil, and Esther agrees. Esther commands her by the Order of the Rosenthal family, and Tawu sighs, resigning to the Order of Esther that the growth stops in various places, but she only continues again and says she'll carry out the wish. Tawu further reveals himself to be Isaac Rosenthal the fourth head who hid himself in the Tao Wu card, and is the devil that deceived Tao Wu. Soldiers come to Isaac's compound and ask that General Lee and his daughter be released, but Isaac says that he didn't keep them hostage, but gave them a taste of the necromancy they said they hated. The soldiers see father and daughter but puke at the sight of them. The creatures or Isaac's work of art attack the soldiers, and that's when he came up with the thought of creating a supreme being. Tao Wu says that it's Esther's fault that Hirumi committed suicide, because a necromancer spreads death wherever they go. Esther is heartbroken when Tao Wu says that he won't stop until he brings to pass the wish of the Rosenthal family, because everything that happened from the start was his plan. Hutu carries them out as Tao Wu continues to expand. When they meet Accelerator outside, he tells them to escape first and goes ahead to where Tao Wu is. Esther tells Accelerator that she caused the trouble the moment she arrived in that laboratory, and Accelerator says that he'll take down Tao Wu even if Esther chooses to give up then. Academy City is drained of colors and everyone sees the golem, wondering what it is and what it means. Tao Wu says that she has enough time and resources to experiment once she's done with the creation. Accelerator walks in on Tao Wu and asks if that's all she wants to become. Tao Wu says that's what she wants to become, a supreme being with a perfect body and perfect soul. Accelerator tells Tao Wu to do it in another place, not in Academy City, but Tao Wu says that the city wants this kind of thing too because they sought a level 6 S. She says that in the entire world, Academy City was the only place where she found the memories of the horror of 10,031 deaths. Tao Wu recognizes Accelerator as the one who killed all those girls because their memories are in her head, and she can see how Accelerator brutally killed the girls. She says that Accelerator has her respect because she can't kill that many. Accelerator is annoyed because of how Tao Wu is using the memory of the girls. He attacks Tao Wu, but she keeps regenerating, and she calls Accelerator desperate before disappearing to complete the process of becoming a supreme being. Esther recalls Tao Wu's words to her about how Hirumi's suicide is completely Esther's fault, because death follows a necromancer wherever they go. Esther wonders what her purpose is now that the entire blame lies on the Rosenthal family, and she couldn't save or protect those that she wanted to. A Masaka puts Last Order to sleep and says that she wishes that Last Order has happy dreams on days like this. The Masaka girl asks Accelerator if the golem is truly the kind of supreme being that the Rosenthal family wanted, but looks like. And Accelerator answers that it isn't because the current golem is only a bucket of scum. Accelerator faces Esther and asks her what truly wants to protect because that's the only way she can be a true hero. Esther thinks about it and remembers her promise to Harumi. She tells Accelerator to help her defeat the monster and also asks, Hutu to fight alongside, because she now knows what she wants to protect. Accelerator asks Hishigata to stay back and think about all the evil things he has done. Accelerator, Esther, Huotu, and the Misaka girl go ahead, but meet Hishigata in front, and Accelerator asks how Hishigata has gotten ahead of them. Hishigata says that he has many supply routes inside that school, and he can't let the guy who destroyed Hirumi get away with it. Misaka asks if it's possible to defeat the monster, and Esther assures her that they can because she has Shun's blade with her, and it possesses poison, especially for Tao Wu, to disrupt the affairs of Tao Wu. She says, it'll be hard, however, because Tao Wu's body is grotesque and blowing it up will not work since it'll just regenerate. Hishigata volunteers to show them where Harumi Tao Wu is. Esther says it'll be dangerous for Hishigata to move around, but he says it doesn't matter since he'll die eventually. He says that the body is swelling into the school walls, and it won't take time to reach its perfect form. The anti-skill officers, Yomikawa, Ito, and others, are held back from attacking Tao Wu by the governing board because they don't know what it is, but the officers use a drone to study it and are alarmed by whatever creature is doing that and why. Tao Wu watches Accelerator and the others moving about inside her. She thinks that her body is evolving slowly, and she seems to be missing something. Some DA officers wonder why they haven't seen the anti-skill and almost conclude that they have lost them before they get swallowed up by Tao Wu. Tao Wu is glad and now knows that she needs to assimilate people to speed up her perfection. Accelerator stops her from assimilating the people in his group, although he wonders why the monster is suddenly hungry. The DA officers ask for help, but because anti-skill doesn't have clearance yet, they hold back until Yomikawa says she'll help them because she's a teacher before she's an officer, and she can't look away from those asking for help. 
The other officers agree and follow Yomikawa. The dead officers inside Tawu's body rise like zombies against Accelerator and his group. Accelerator destroys them, telling Misaka that they are already dead. They continue the journey, and Accelerator asks when they'll reach the monster's main body. He says he's running out of time. Tao Wu is glad that she's fulfilling Rosenthal's 400-year-long wish. Accelerator and the others finally reach Tao Wu's main body, but the moment Accelerator moves close, light shines around and paralyzes him, such that he can't move. Tao Wu announces that she has finally reached the stage of a perfect golem with a perfect soul and a perfect body, which is on par with a supreme being. Esther watches Accelerator, who is still unable to move but is being affected, and wonders if Tao Wu has truly reached the stage of a perfect golem. Accelerator wonders what kind of power Tao Wu possesses, and thinks his time is up. Tao Wu keeps eating up more of the DA officers, and her power keeps increasing, but suddenly she starts saying things that she doesn't mean to say, like bringing Academy City to real justice. This causes her to be silent for a while, wondering why she's saying things like, justice. Accelerator takes the chance to bring Esther and the others to the surface where the real body is, and Tao Wu is surprised to see them. Esther brings out her knife and starts to run towards Tao Wu while Hua Tu fights against the powers of Tao Wu that get in Esther's way. Esther is about to stab Tao Wu when she changes to the form of Hirumi, and this sways Esther but Tao Wu is only deceiving her. Tao Wu laughs at Esther and says that the Rosenthal family has fallen if someone like Esther is their head. Accelerator tells Esther to gather herself together and remember why she came to the surface in the first place. He says that to be a hero and save what she wants to protect, she needs to focus and go for what she wants without getting swayed. When they finish talking, Tao Wu asks if they have finished their pep talk and says it's time for her to show the world justice. She stretches her hands to the sky and something purple begins to form, but she cracks and it stops. She looks around and realizes that Hishigata and Misaka were the ones who disrupted her flow by cutting her connection to the coffin that houses Hirumi's body. Esther jumps at Tao Wu but is caught by Tao Wu's powers before she can stab Tao Wu, and Tao Wu says that Esther has lost. Misaka and Huotu help Esther to push the blade, and Tao Wu begs them not to do it, because there is a lot that she still wants to achieve. Accelerator destroys another part of Tao Wu, and when Tao Wu asks who he is and why he keeps getting in her way, Accelerator says he's a villain just like Tao Wu, and he asks Esther to go ahead and stab Tao Wu. Esther says, Tao Wu and Tao Wu comes out of Hirumi's body. Hirumi says goodbye to Esther and Hishigata, and the body is completely destroyed. Hishigata also dies, although he's a little sad that he doesn't become a hero. The vast power that was created through Isaac when Tao Wu was in Hirumi's body begins to bubble up, and Misaka explains that the power is causing distortion in the space and Misaka network. She says that if it explodes, it'll cause a leveling of the Earth. Accelerator tries to control it with his vector but is unable to. However, he says he'll take it on himself if the hero, Last Order, is not there. Last Order is sleeping soundly. He uses everything he has to take control of the effect of the bubbling power and stops it from causing destruction. Esther cries beside the weakened subconscious body of Accelerator. Nakimoto and his secretary talk about what happened with Hishigata and how they put the situation under control. Last Order asks Accelerator why he didn't come for the last checkup, but rather than answer him, Accelerator asks her to get him something at School District 14. Yomikawa enters the ward and tells Accelerator that they have taken care of the situation, but she would want to know more about what happened behind the scenes since Accelerator was closer to it. Accelerator doesn't give her any new information, but says that the fight of villains resulted in a chemical reaction. Esther removes Huo Tu from Hasami's body and promises to remember her forever. Huo Tu says she knows that Esther has made the right choice. Esther bids farewell to Accelerator and says that she'll find the right path as the head of Rosenthal and Accelerator's pupil. Another drama begins in Academy City, and Accelerator declares that it never gets boring in the city.